Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for clicking on this video and welcome to night number one out of the third annual 13 Nights of Fright. Now if you guys are new, um, these are all first time watches and this is literally the only time of year that you will get horror content from me because I'm not about that life. Usually all the movies that I review during the 13 Nights are very like old school movies, classic movies, comedy, horror kind of movies like that, parodies, just anything that has the word horror but that's not full horror. I don't do jump scares, I don't do demonic things. I'm not gonna lie, this year was a little bit tough trying to figure out what movies I wanted to watch. I don't know why. Um, it was, it was, I had a struggle with them this year. Now this year actually is gonna be a little bit different compared to the last two years. I'm actually gonna be reviewing a lot of like newer type movies especially the last like three nights i think it is three or four nights um i'm gonna be reviewing movies that came out this year so instead of doing just like a single solo review i was like you know what i'm just gonna incorporate it within my 13 nights of fright that way i don't have extra kind of you know videos in between since these are going to be daily we're gonna go ahead and start off night one with 1960s the little shop our horrors of course there is one that came out in the 80s i believe it was 86 and i'm not gonna lie that's the one that was actually trying to watch over this one now this movie is just uh, a little over an hour long it is in black and white now you already know i'm terrible with names but we do have seymour who is not the best worker there is he's very incompetent and the flower shop's owner is just fed up with his nonsense is trying to get him out there's this uh man there who eats flowers that is right he likes to eat the flowers the owner is trying to fire seymour because you know he's just been messing up and messing up and we have a third worker audrey uh she is of course the love interest of seymour and she's just like the sweetest little thing just like very perky and everything and she's supposed to be very kind of like a naive type of character again it is the 60s in the midst of them firing him seymour was letting the owner know that hey you know what i've been working on this plant like what if i bring it over maybe i can win you over and maybe i could bring in business business maybe not i don't know but what do you think flower eaters are like you know what i've been eating flowers like all over the world and usually the shop that has like the oddest or most unique plant is the one that has the most business and then maybe possibly not will buy other flowers as well while you're there because it was a very um the flower shop was not doing very well being this like cross between the venus flight trap and some other type of uh deal I, I i don't really recall what kind because you know it's me this plant um comes to life and it's always saying feed me feed me feed me that is right except plant talks it started off with just cutting his fingers and giving him drops of blood that's really all the plant wanted at first because it was a tiny little plant of course as it got more and more blood and blood inside of him he ended up growing bigger and bigger so seymour needed to find food for him um now he did accidentally kill some people or maybe they accidentally killed themselves i don't know just you know maybe they were just passed out they were just being hit over the head with the rock they were probably just unconscious and seymour would take advantage because he thought he, he killed them i don't know maybe during this time they actually did die with just like a little headbutt no one guy he didn't get run over by it he didn't get his head he got he got run over by a train that one was odd. i mean they we were all, even the prostitute was an accident it's a whole thing of this plant getting big the owner finding out what's going on the owner is like freaking out it's very very quirky you guys it's very quirky I've, I've pretty much given you the first like half of it unintentionally i really didn't mean to go into spoiler this much spoiler territory so we'll, we'll leave the rest as that is i, I kind of caught myself caught myself a little bit too late but i, I caught myself before we gave all of it away this one for what it was in the time period i really enjoyed it of course we have all those practical effects um because there was no kind of like cgi thing and i'm a big fan of practical effects generally it's a movie that i feel like was very self-aware of what it was and i i had a really good time with it to be honest with you but before i do give you my score if you haven't already don't forget to give this video a like subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet don't forget to hit the notification bell so you'll be notified each time to post something new and that way you don't miss the remaining 12 nights of fright but with that said i'm going to go ahead and give little shop of horrors a medium popcorn if you have seen this movie let me know down below what did you think about it did you like it did you love it did you hate it was it just not for you have you seen the 80s version what did you think about it do you like that one over this one i do plan on watching it at some point maybe next year maybe if i can actually find it 
um, are incorporated for um, the fourth annual Fright Night. Sneaking in here quickly because I forgot to mention that Jack Nicholson has a small little very memorable cameo in this film as well. I believe if I read correctly this was like his second, third, fourth, somewhere around there. It was like very early on featured films. When he popped up I was just like Check Nicholson. So that's it for me tonight. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.